Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Good morning, everybody. Today is Saturday, but you're going to be watching this on Sunday morning. So, hopefully, <laughs> again, I apologize. I didn't write a sermon again. I've just been busy a lot. But uh, we're going to get there. We're going to keep speaking that. Um, and we're going to get there someday. Um, let's get right to it. I don't like try to. I don't like to try to be too long. Whew, it's a nice day, isn't it? It's beautiful, right? So with all that's going on, you know, I've been home too. And I realize, you know, you can, you can do a lot of good things that, you know, for other people. But sometimes you can do so much for others, you can forget about your own family. I don't know if you're like me, but that's what I've, I've forgotten a lot about my own family. And, and uh, that takes some readjusting, readjusting perspectives, readjusting your heart, you know, your mind, readjusting your attitude. You know, sometimes we forget how to have relationships with our close ones. And, and uh, because we're always having relationships with everyone else when we're working, you know, we're always tasking ourselves out to everybody else. So this virus or whatever is going on and all this other stuff has really taught me since being home how to be a husband, how to be a father, you know, how to live at home. And I look around in my house, I'm like, man, there's so many things that I have neglected and that I need to do outside the house and inside the house and inside the marriage and, and, and inside the family home with the kids. Maybe you feel the same way. Within all that being said, I think this is the time to start to appreciate that, you know, because we're always distracted with everything else. Easter has arrived. Jesus died and he's resurrected today. So the question is, where is Jesus in your life? Or what is Jesus calling you to do? When he ascended, he, he gave out some specific orders. He said, make, make disciples of all the nations. Where are you discipling? Now, I want to expose something that has come to my um, has come to my awareness. And that would be my own life as far as my own relationship. Sometimes we, we get so out of tune, we think we need to disciple everyone in the, in the world. And that is great. Hopefully we can get there someday. But maybe, maybe we just need to disciple the people that are right next to us. Right, the people we talk to that we know they don't have a relationship with Jesus, or or simply sometimes the people who even have a relationship with Jesus, maybe they don't even, um, maybe they need some Jesus from some other people because they're too busy being Jesus for everybody else. Maybe they need someone to be a Jesus to them, like your spouse, like your kids. Do we think about that? Do we think about the people who are, who are close to us? We, are, we as a church are so tasked out with everybody else that we can, we can start giving our resources, which is our energy and our resources to everybody else to the point where we don't have anything for the people in our close, the close proximity around us all the time, every day. So our church can, it can start to feel like that... Um, that we're empty, like people come to church and they're like, it just kind of feels like work. <laughs> it's like, I'm working already five plus days a week and now I'm coming to church on Sunday to work again. And it's like, 
Isn't there rest? Where is the rest in Christ if, if, if all my life is just about working and serving others? And it's good to serve others. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. So I guess my challenge is today is, is, is the Christian faith isn't something that you just sit down and lounge and wait for Jesus' coming. The Christian faith is about taking initiative. The Christian faith is about becoming a better person, better than you were yesterday. Not competing against everybody else because you'll never win that battle, but competing against how can I improve to please God? Where is God's will for my life? Not 10 years from now or tomorrow or a week. Where is his will for my life today? What does God want me to do today? What are my sins that I struggle with today? What do I need to repent of today? Who do, who do I need to say I'm sorry to today and actually make a conversion in my heart to better myself today? And sometimes looking at the mirror and being honest with ourselves, which is taking communion, is really hard for us to be criticized, to be judged, but that's what we are as the church. We are to be corrected because God loves us. And sometimes he sends people into our lives to correct us because he loves us. And at the time, it just feels like a judgment. But I promise you, I promise you, there's more reward in accepting the judgment than to just simply say, I'm just going to get rid of this person in my life. And sometimes our imagination can just get to us. Sometimes it's not even the other person. It's just our sinful nature that's thinking of evil things. Jesus said, why do you think evil in your hearts? What he's saying is when an evil thought comes to your heart about somebody, why do you entertain that? Why don't you rebuke that thought? Why don't you repent of that thought? And many Pharisees, they entertain negative thoughts and they go, they go around looking for negative things about to think about people. They, they think of the worst things about people. They have no hope for people. And I know this because I do this and I've done this and everything I've taught and will teach is everything that God has shown me. It's like, Jeremy, why do you constantly think about evil, about this person, about these people, about this church? And I'm like, because they're, you know, and he's like, hold it. Is it true? Or is it just something that you just, your imagination takes off? Do you constantly let your imagination take off and you just think the worst of people. You see, Jesus is calling us to be aware of our, our nature and to say, reject your nature. Don't trust in your nature. Trust in me. Look to me and I will give you my eyes. And until that happens, then you can't see yourself for who you really are. Because probably all your enemies aren't even your enemies. You've just put these people in a box. You're the one judging them. They don't even know what you're doing. They don't even think about you on a regular basis. So when you come and you see them, you're treating them this way. And they're like, why is this person treating me this way? Because you're the one that's living in sin. You're the one that's entertaining evil. And I know this because I've done this. And this is what God is trying to teach his church. He's, he wants his church to be wise. He wants his church to pray for, him, for his, their neighbors. He wants his church to be one. He wants his church to forgive and repent and say, I'm sorry, not just, just to God, but to show their faith in, in, in people. For God so loved the world, he showed his his love through Jesus to people. And he wants us to show that same love. You have a relationship with God? Yes, I have a relationship with God. So show that relationship that you have with him, that you love him and then love others. Forgive others of their trespasses. Pray for others as Jesus prayed for you and I to be saved. Be responsible with the faith. Look at the doctrine and go, wow, I need to work on that. I need to work on that. You're never going to be perfect. You'll never find a perfect church. You'll never find a perfect human being except Jesus. And when you find him, don't reject him and don't get mad when he corrects you or sends people in your life to correct you. Humble yourself and accept the correction because he loves you 
and he wants to set you free. He doesn't want you to be in bondage to your sin. One of the biggest things that our church needs to understand is the power of prayer. Prayer, prayer, pray for each other. Live disciplined lives. Don't go back into that lifestyle. We are not to be conformed to the people's way of living in this world. We are to conform them to our way of living. Nothing has really changed since the Old Testament to the New Testament except the Son of God came. And instead of sacrificing animals and all this other ritualistic things that got exalted more than loving each other, Jesus came to show us right from wrong. He came to show us how to love each other. And we ought to do the same for each other. We ought to walk and live as Jesus walked and lived. What did Jesus do? He prayed every morning. He woke up early and he spent time with God. He made time for his father and he calls his church, he calls his children to make time for their father. And then he put others first. He served all day, every day. Whether he was at a job, whatever job he did, he did it to the best of his abilities. Whether he was at home, he did it to the people around him, to the best of his abilities. He poured out his whole life as a living sacrifice to serve other people. And God is calling his church to serve other people. What if you don't have anything? What if your body doesn't work? And what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Well, here's something simple that you can do. Pray for your enemies. Pray for the people who need prayer in other countries. Pray for the politicians. Pray for our government. Pray for the school district. Pray for the police department. Pray for the lost. Pray for them. They need it. There's always someone who needs something and there's always something that you can give them. Our battles aren't against each other. What he said, she said, how they looked at you and what you did to this and what who did this to you. It's all spiritual. It's all spiritual. If you could, if the veil would lift, was lifted, you would realize and you would see these demons in people's lives enslaving them to sin. They've sinned, the demon entered into them, and now that demon has been living in their life for a long, long time, controlling them like a puppet, telling them what to say, telling them how to look at people and how to perceive things, and they're all bad. And that's why we have strife in the church, in our nation, in our homes, in our communities, everywhere, and we need to pray. That's the highlight of this whole situation. You need to pray to God. You need to pray. He says, if my people would humble themselves and seek my face and pray to me, then I will do mighty works and I will show them my salvation. Pray to the Lord. Ask him what you need. Pray for other people. Intercede for other people. My salvation was interceded by many people who prayed for me because that's how I got salvation. And that's how you got salvation. There are people in your life who prayed for you to get salvation. Jesus prayed for you to get salvation. And you don't deserve it. And we go around bad mouthing Christians and we other Christians and we go around bad mouthing each other. We go around bad mouthing the people in the world and, and treating them like, oh, they don't deserve to be saved. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. We need to pray for them. That's where the battle is going to be won. There was a pastor. His name is, he's a pastor. He's a seminary teacher. He's amazing. I love him. I don't even know him. I didn't meet him. But I watch all his videos and I'm reading his books and they're just amazing. He gives this story about um, a woman who was married to a, a man who was a Jew uh, he, be he believed in Judaism and then she was a Christian and she became and believed in a Judaism as well. And for years, and he passed away and she was still in that. And he said, there were multiple people praying for her. He said like 10 years later, he, he hears about her again and she 
reverted back into Christianity. Now she's a Bible teacher at some college. And it's just like, wow, the power of prayer. You need to pray for the salvation of your brothers and your sisters, whether they're close family or whether it's your neighbor next door or whether it's the government. You need to pray, pray, pray. Jesus prayed for you. Jesus came down here, lived a perfect life for you to have salvation. You need to pray and be like Jesus and, and pray for other people. Help them. You may not be able to do to loan, to tithe and help them physically or whatever your excuse is, or whether you actually can't do it, which I understand, but you can pray. You open your mouth. I open my mouth. We all open our mouth. We can pray. So let's pray for them. Let's pray for their life. Let's intercede for their life because they have no one praying for them. They have nobody to pray for them. You know what God wants to hear more than he hears you asking for the things that you want? He wants you to ask for, he wants you to pray for your neighbors. He wants to see his children praying for each other. We always go to God and we say, God, I want, I want, I want, I want. But we never think about others. Do you? Do you? Pray, pray, ask God. Pray for their salvation. Pray that they get delivered from the sin that, that whatever they struggle with. Power of prayer is strong in people's lives. I'm going to give you one testimony and then I'm going to, I'm going to cut it out. <laughs> I'm going to gone. I'm going to cut this video. It's going to be over. <laughs> I said like three different ways. <sighs> so. I read this book, it's a prayer book, and then I read two different books. One was about spiritual warfare. Derek Prince, you probably heard of him. I was referred to him by a person, he knows who he is if he watches this video. And um, there was another book, John Wesley, about prayer, power of prayer. Most battles are won, and they, they both basically spoke on the same thing, the power of prayer. And I love to read more of their books and learn more about Christ in these books. Ah, and they're speaking about prayer, how you can conquer nations through prayer. Battles are not won by flesh and blood, by our strength, they're won in prayer. And I start reading through this stuff. This guy's going through just honest, humble prayer, John Wesley, and this guy, Derek Prince, is going into spiritual battles. There are a few people that I decided to pray for. I pray for a lot of people, but these people, they, they came up in my thoughts and I was like, I went into a more longer intense prayer for them. And I said, God, I want you to show me the strong man in their life, the strong demon over their life. And I just pray and pray. Just show me what it is you want me to pray for them. Show me who it is, what kind of spirit it is that's controlling their life. Show me, show me, show me, show me. I want to see, I want to see. You just wait. You just keep asking, keep asking. And then, and then I ask and I ask. And usually when I pray for other people, I'm like, oh, it's like an open door. You know, it's like when you see your friend, it's like, hey, and you feel welcomed. And you see your family member or your spouse, you're like, hey, you know just open like oh hey yeah how you doing but when you see someone that you don't like or you don't know who they are and all this stuff it's kind of like you got like you guard up and stuff like that well it's the same way in prayer when you pray for people who are spiritually open even if they know it or not or usually they have a relationship with Jesus it's just an open thing they can receive the blessing straight from heaven but some people have walls they have walls up and, and, and I start to pray for this person, these people, particularly this person in, in this moment. And I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. And suddenly I come across like a wall and I'm like, what is that? There's something there. And I just keep praying and praying. And then I get this feeling and then I, I get this resistance. And it's like, no, you need to go back. You need to, you need to not pray no more for this person. It's like pushing against me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it starts, to, it starts to feel like, is this a bad prayer in my heart? Because my heart, my spirit, you know, when you, you feel like your spirit gets like 
like quenches in a moment. I'm like, what is that? And, and the Holy Spirit's like, keep persisting. And I was like, okay, let's go. This is the moment of war. You know, like you ever been in a fight? Hopefully you haven't. It's terrible. But if you have, when you know, like you're at strife with someone, you're like, oh, we're arguing. Oh, we're fighting. Oh, this is happening. This was happening in, in the shower as I'm praying for this person. And I'm like, well, what is this? And there was just, it was a wall. And there was like, no, you need to back up. You need to back up. And I was like, nah, 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 nah. I'm coming here with Jesus' blood, with his name. I'm coming here. I'm coming here and I'm declaring over this person's life. And they're just like, no, 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 no. Just pushing me back. This spirit. I'm talking to a demon in the morning over this person's life who's been there for a long time. And he's like, no back up, back up. And I'm sitting here like, no, I come here in Jesus' name to bind you up and cast you out of this person. There are spirits over people's lives controlling them. It was, it was, it was intense. It was an intense fight. He, this demon was strong. He was strong. It was a female I was praying for. And you know what he said? He said, she's mine. She said, he said, no, you're, you're not going to pray for her. And I said, yes, I am. I said, did you die for Jesus? Did you die for her sins? He said, no, no, no. He just kept saying, no, no, no. And I was like, who's the Lord? He was like, no, no. I was like, Jesus is the Lord. I was like, say it. Jesus is Lord. He was like, no, 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 no. He just kept fighting and fighting. And he says, this, she's mine. She's mine. And I said, no, she's not. She belongs to Jesus. Let her go. He's like, no, no. I was like, let her go. Let her go. And I don't know if you've ever gotten hit physically, but if you've ever gotten hit spiritually, it hurts. It hurts. It's like, boom, it hit me. He hit me. He hit my spirit. And I was like, dang, man. And, he's, and the Holy Spirit was like, muscle it out, Jeremy. Get him. And then I was like just praying love over his life. Her, her life, praying love over this demon that was like a male, like demon, but praying over her. And she was in bondage to this spiritual being, evil being. He was strong. But if you persist with the name of Jesus, with the blood of Christ, and you come in there, Christ will back you. The Holy Spirit will back you. And you persist and you persist. This demon was strong. I don't want to go too far, but I'm going to end with this. He basically said, I'm married to her. She belongs to me. And some people have so many strong demons over their life, maybe one, maybe two, where they, they can't have relationships with other people. They can't forgive you other people because there's these demons that are holding them back. Some of you guys can't, can't have relationships. You can't, you know, hold a job. You don't know how to da 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 These are demons over your life. And for those of you who have one, I've had one in me. And I prayed. I, and, the, and I started praying for it. And I said, God, if I was a demon in me, cast it out. Please cast it out. Cast it out. And he did. And it was like, it doesn't want to leave. Pray for yourself. Pray for other people. Long story short, that demon got cast out, but it, it, it hit me. He hit me. It was strong. I was like, dang. Like, psh. I was like, man, that's... <sighs> it was like my breathing was hard, and I was like, what happened? It was like he struck me as he left her. And I was like, wow. But if she goes back and sins again, What could, what could we really do? But anyways, that demon will enter back in. Pray for people. We're not fighting against people. We're fighting against demons. For those of you who are Christians, you have a Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. And that Holy Spirit can cast out demons. Not by your strength or your power, but by the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, you proclaim that over people's lives. 
And when you start praying for people, the demons will start to say, don't pray for this person. They'll start to feel like resistance. I would say, press on through that resistance. That's not you. Your spirit's like, oh, that that's must be bad. No, I'm not going to do that. That's not you. That's the demon suppressing you from praying for that person. And sometimes you need to keep praying for them every day for however long it takes until they finally become a Christian, until they're finally set free from that sin. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Jesus said this to Peter. He says, the devil is sniffing you out, Peter, but I've prayed for you that when you are strong enough, you ought to pray for your brothers and your sisters, just as I've prayed for you. We can come up with all the greatest strategies of sermons. We can come up with all this other stuff. It's amazing. It's great. It's personal flesh, one-on-one -on -one interactions. Let's face it. I can't get to Trump. Huh? I got my own life. And even if I did, I got other things to do. It's a long trip to get to every single person. When I could just simply pray for Trump, when I could simply pray for the people in my family that are across the world, pray for each other as I have prayed for you. God bless, man. I love you guys. You guys are amazing.